the reason that I have you um, on screen here today is you told me that you had a pretty interesting um, demonstration with a, with a client of yours, um, not necessarily in the security industry, but in uh, the, the traffic observation industry. So, um, right. you know, what, this traffic entity, we all, we all know about traffic, right? Plenty of cars all over the highway today. Um, yep. This traffic entity has some inherent challenges that all traffic entities have, but they also have some challenges that are potentially unique to them. Why don't you give us a quick rundown of, of you know, their situation? Sure, sure. I, I, I mean, we all, we're all trying to get smarter. And believe it or not, even as, as you think about traffic and highways, they're getting smarter. Um, and they, their biggest problems are, and again, traffic monitoring, ITS, city surveillance, they're all trying to help us get around quicker and easier. And uh, what their biggest problems are is they have cameras already, but I hate to say it, you know, the cameras are, are dumb unless the operators themselves pick up that there's an, a problem or an issue. So what their goal was here is how do I detect a problem before they even know it's a problem? So that's what we, you know, we're, we're showing them are some of the applications and the new technology behind some of these cameras. Okay. So, so what was their particular challenge that they're trying to solve? Like why, why did they say, Hey Tom, we need to get together. Sure. Yep. But what, the, you know, what their goal was um, when, when they're looking at traffic flow, and the traffic's flowing at 55, 60, 70 miles an hour, everybody's happy. They're happy, you're happy, I'm happy because I'm on the road. But as the traffic starts slowing down, now not even a complete stop when it slows down, maybe to 30 miles an hour, they wanna actually then be able to get an alarm condition from their camera system, again, video analytics that are built into it, can monitor when traffic slows down. And at that point, trigger an alarm and let the operators know Hey, we have an issue here. Then at that point, the operators now can assist. So let me stop you for a second. Why sure. does there need to be an alarm? I mean, there's a guy or a woman sitting in this traffic um, operations center watching all these cameras. Is uh, are they not watching? Or what do you, why, why is there an alarm? Sure, Matt. How many monitors do you have in front of you? Too many. I have four. <laughs> <laughs> Think of being in a command center with now 60 monitors that are quadded out. So you're looking at hundreds of cameras and hundreds of video channels. You just can't comprehend, you can't see everything. And you literally get snow blind. You get to a point where you can't pick up even incidents where you should be able to. Okay, so too much video, not enough people, not enough monitors. Sure, yep, yeah. All right, so they've got this, need to be told when there's a problem. Um, yep. And that's kind of a new, that's a new problem that a lot of people have, right? We're doing um, convention centers and hospitals that have thousands of cameras. I mean, that's, that's significant. So back to the, to the roadway though, they're looking at, um, you're talking about slowing traffic. That can be because of um, snow, um, an accident, a car fire, um, yep. a, a host of reasons why um they need to take a look um right. so then they're also looking they're not looking 50 feet away like you made in a parking lot they're what, what kind of range are they looking at sure and, and that's one of the other goals here is the further they can see with one camera they need less cameras now so again they're looking at the technology to be able to say I, how far can i see how far can i detect how, how far can I actually see these cars now slowing down or these vehicles slowing down? So if we were notoriously maybe a half a mile, now if the cameras can see a mile, now they can space those cameras out further, use less cameras. And because they're smart, now they're letting the operators know, hey, we got a problem. So okay. it's sort of a, a, a double edge, but on the good side. Okay. So... Um you guys decided to meet not at their facility, um, but rather, where did you guys get together? Sure, we we met at the uh, the Bosch Training uh, and Sales Office in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, um, okay. and, and it was 
it was good for me. I didn't have to drive as far. It was good for the end user because they got to see technology and they got to talk to the not just see technology, but talk to product managers, talk to their integrator who came. So we like a round table. It just wasn't a a demo where, hey, look at this, isn't this cool? They got right. to talk to product managers about what the, uh, the technology is doing today, but where's the future going? But also ask them questions about what they would like to see also as the future goes. Okay, so at, at the Lancaster facility for Bosch, it just so happens to sit next to a highway. Yes. <laughs> so, th so that's, you know, the other thing that we could observe there is, is farming. Um, and <laughs> so you got the farm and you got the highway. And in their yeah. case, um, they benefit because Bosch has all these cameras mounted to the top of the building and Correct. they can down the highway. And so it's perfect for, for this particular customer. Yep. Um, um, so you guys get in there, you, you're taking a look at the camera or the camera feeds, the different, the different options that they have there. And in traffic, they use a variety of different kinds of cameras, right? And we talk about traffic, there's roadway, um, there's tunnel, um, bridges, and then there's toll booths and office buildings. So they have a wide range of cameras that they use. But for the most part, when you're just on the open highway, um, mm -hmm. we're looking at a, a normal um, dome-shaped hand-tilt zoom camera um, that's usually on a lowering device or, or mounted to a, um, something up high so they can get a good uh, vantage point, right? Right, yeah. Okay, so, so in this case, they already have those cameras they're trying to understand some new technology. So give me a quick rundown of what, what got them excited that they were able to see that they wouldn't have been able to see otherwise. Sure, sure. So we, you know, we've gone also from you know, the, the standard deaf technology to the higher resolution cameras. So they've pretty much now standardized on the, the 1080 uh, 2.3 megapixel resolution cameras, and they typically use the 7000 series Starlight Autodome which is an, an incredible camera, correct. It's a Bosch uh, pan, tilt, and zoom camera. Normally, if you're just driving on the highway, probably don't spot them that easily because they're up on a 30, 40 foot pole, like you said, a camera lowering device, um, okay. so they can see greater distances. Um, what we looked at um, at this de demo, they also wanted to see some of the newer technology. So um, some cameras that we call the mix series camera, and, uh, they're, they're more, in fact, I, I have one here, one of the older guys, you know, the Mic is a hardened, rugged camera, so you can put this thing mounted this way, you can invert it, you can have it mounted this way, but the real uh, magic behind it is it's got flat glass here, so okay. unlike a pan, tilt, and zoom, uh, a dome version, it has curved glass. Curved glass, Bosch and everyone else optically corrects it. But when you're looking through curved glass, it does distort, especially when okay. you have high resolution and you're trying to see long distances. So the most you'll be able to get out of curved glass, even with a big zoom on it, you know, maybe about a half a mile, um, where the, the same resolution camera in a MIC with flat glass, you may be able to get out to closer to two miles. Okay, so they get a little uh, more clarity at a higher range. Correct. Okay. What, uh, what else? That's a pretty easy thing to explain by telephone. I, I don't know that somebody needs to get together with you in person to see that. So what got them sure. excited? Yeah, yeah. Well, the, the other thing is the ruggedness of it. So we're putting it now in environments where poles are shaking and vibration, and sometimes on the bridges and in tunnels that get very dirty, or again, the vibration um, you know, can actually jar those units, and it'll shorten the life expectancy where these, they're built for the ruggedness, the vibration. We put these MIC cameras on environments that uh, earth movers, uh, you know, uh, bore drilling devices. So, so right, it's right, very rugged environment. Exactly, exactly. So the mean time between failure goes up greatly also. Um, and what's part of the, the other thing that they look at is, everyone looks today at, well, what's the cost of the unit? Well. These MIC cameras are more expensive than domes. So right away you go, why the heck would I buy these MICs? Well, if you can see further distances, the need less, but also the mean time between failure on these is about three times longer than a traditional dome. 
they're sealed, they're IP68 uh, uh, rated. So the nice thing with these units, um, you don't need to maintain them as much. So you don't need to shut down a highway or shut down a bridge to go up and grab it, clean it, or you know replace it. There's even a wiper on this thing. So again, it's self-cleaning then at that point. Okay, so in that, in that um, there's a couple options. One is um, just a visible camera, which we're all used to seeing um, when you show, um, you know, you, you connect into your local news station or that, you know, you're watching their broadcast and they show the traffic flow on the highway or the lack of traffic flow on the highway. <laughs> now that's a visible camera. And then if I understand right, we were able to show them a brand new camera. If you could just give us a quick, why, why was that one specifically yep. interesting to them? Um, and, and all three of these cameras we're talking about from a, you know, a dome PTZs to the MIG 7000 to the MIG 9000, the MIG 9000 now has a visible camera in it, has a 1080, you know, starlight camera in it, but also has a thermal camera. And, okay. you know, the way we think of thermal cameras, it's looking for heat signatures. So it doesn't matter what the lighting's like at during the day or at night, it's looking for heat signatures and everything has a specific heat signature. People versus cars versus wood. So even though you can't see visibly like you, you're used to it, um, and again, I always relate to that movie from Arnold Schwarzenegger, um, Predator, how that right. thing saw. It's, it's similar to that. It's looking for heat. So it's a little bit easier to see, especially at night, but in a lot of environments where there's heavy fog or heavy smoke in a tunnel, it can see through that and actually be able to see the heat signatures, the cars, the objects, and people. And okay. even people alongside the road, a visible camera, it's sort of you blend in with your surroundings. We're thermal, now you're a person, your temperature is higher than your surroundings, you stick out much easier, you're able to see that person at greater distances. So I would think that that would be also emergency operations or construction, if there's um, fog on the highway, uh, and, and the traffic monitoring center is responsible for keeping an eye on things, if you will. Um, right. they, they can see that there's a worker. I don't. I don't want to quote a distance because there's a lot of variables involved. But at a long range, that might be um, normally obscured by fog or something like that. And then likewise, in, you, you use that tunnel example. Um, if there were a fire in the tunnel, um, firefighters could be informed by the traffic monitoring center where they need to go, or you know, have just Overall, better situational awareness, I think, is really what it comes down to. Correct. Correct. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So these cameras, um, whether it's the the Autodome or the or the Mix series, they're all connected to software in this operations center. Um, Correct. Is it all Bosch software, or how how, do, how does the Bosch camera get into these systems? It and, and that's that's a great question because today, pretty much most of our equipment, all of it integrates to Bosch VMSs, video management systems, but we play more with other manufacturers out there. And again, the list goes on, you know, Genetech, Milestone, ONSSI, Exact, Salient. Um, we play incredibly well with them. So uh, no matter what head-end equipment you have, the, the head-end like traffic monitoring center for your security desk. Okay. Correct. Correct. You know, the software, your recording system. And, and here's another thing, Matt. It, most of these highway ITS projects, they don't record, which oh, okay. I know everyone sort of goes, what do you mean? Um, they're using it for traffic monitor, a traffic flow, emergency situations. They, but, they tell me I'm, that. If I'm, uh, if I'm monitoring a fence line that's very long, I, I have a similar situation. It's just that I choose to record because. I'm in a security situation versus right. traffic where it's just not, that's not, they're not there for security. They're there for keeping the roads safe and, and open and moving and keeping businesses, you know, moving their trucks around and all that kind of stuff. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So, yeah. So, um, that's not the only customer and end user that you're going to do a demo for. <laughs> so, uh, obviously, people can reach us um, by uh, phone or internet. The easiest way is support at midchess.com. That's M-I-D-C-H-E-S.com. And Tom and all of our colleagues are happy to come out 
um, either take you to the Bosch facility or any of our other manufacturers, whatever's applicable to your situation, um, or bring equipment out and evaluate it uh, right in your environment, right? How often do you get out and do that? Um, I, I like to do that as often as possible because seeing is believing. And we all know access control, fire, even intrusion detection. It, it pretty much works. You present your card or the fire alarm goes off or it's smoke. Video is so objective. What okay. I think is good, what you think is good, completely be two separate you know, uh, ends of the spectrum. So we like to show the customer exactly what it's going to look like in their environment. So with this customer, they just wanted to see the highway. They wanted to see how far and make sure the analytics were going to work and do what they were looking for. Um, and that's the goal. Make sure the customer gets exactly what they want. All right. Well, listen, um, I appreciate your time. I don't want to hold you and, and keep you away from the rest of your partners that are looking for your, uh, your expert help. So thank you very much. And um, we'll see you next time. Thank you.